What I want to do in this video is tell you about both the layers that cover the heart and that make up the heart tissue itself. And you'll see why these are related. So first, I want to remind you of this analogy that the heart is basically in this balloon. And the two layers that directly surround the heart are going to be the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. These are both serous membranes. You remember that term, term um, often made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue, very thin, and it's actually one structure. So you can see that here. It's like taking a hand and stuffing it into a balloon. You're gonna have two separate layers. It's actually the same structure and it's separated by a space. The space is the pericardial cavity. It's not air like it would be with a balloon. This is gonna contain serous fluid. And we'll just say this now, this is important for kind of lubricating the outside the heart, reducing friction during those beats um, kind of a barrier against infections, keeps the heart from overexpanding, a, a nice sac for it. These membranes that surround the heart are going to be called pericardium because they are around the heart. So this is the visceral pericardium and parietal pericardium. So let's draw those two things over here. I'm gonna draw them in the same blue that is shown for that air sac. So this surrounds the heart. The visceral pericardium is the inner one. Visceral means like inside your viscera and it is very closely in contact with the, the heart tissue itself. I should back up actually. What is this pink heart tissue that I've drawn? I'm gonna label this before I change my color. Visceral pericardium. I'm gonna draw my outer layer too while I still have this color. While I'm doing this, drawing the parietal pericardium, you should guess what is the pink like, you know, it's a heart, right? It's the same structure, but what literally is it? It is the myocardium. So it's the heart muscle, cardiac muscle. I'm gonna label that. This is what's going to contract and cause heartbeats. So it's that structure. Um, so in between these two peri the serous pericardial layers, there is this pericardial cavity with the serous fluid. And then we got one more layer that surrounds the heart. This is a fibrous. Let me make it a little bit thicker. Fibrous pericardium. Pericardium, because we're still surrounding the heart. This is going to be a little bit more fibrous, a little bit more dense. Um, has some connective tissue in it. Very closely associated with the parietal pericardium. Those two together make up the pericardial sac. First, let me label, this is our fibrous pericardium. You might remember from 211, we talked about serous and fibrous coverings. These are, this is them, right? This is an example of them. Okay, the last thing I just said. So you can see these two are very closely associated and these two layers are very closely associated. This here is actually our pericardial sac that encloses the pericardial cavity that has that serous fluid in it. Um, now layers of the heart. We actually already have two drawn here. I've labeled one. I'm gonna draw in the inner one and then we'll go back to the outer. So in here, where it's really thin, that's okay. What do you think this is called? It's inside the heart. That's a hint, endo. 
endocardium. So these are layers of the heart. Cardium, um, endocardium is deep to the myocardium. The endocardium is simple squamous tissue. It's going to be continuous with the endothelium of blood vessels that we will look at when we look at blood vessel histology. It's called endocardium because it's in the heart. That's that inner layer, simple squamous epithelium. Then we've got one more layer here that's actually already labeled. What, other, what else could be a layer of the heart here? Well, you can see it, right? This visceral pericardium, this is also called the epicardium because it's closely associated with the heart. It is a layer of the heart. It's also a layer that surrounds the heart. Okay, got it. Okay. So we'll come back to heart muscle, of course. We'll focus on the myocardium. I just like to sh show this once here before we do a quick learning check. The heart muscle itself has these beautiful swirling patterns. So this is our myocardium here. And when that myocardium contracts, it's going to change the size of the ventricles. So this one here, what do you think this is? This is when those muscles are relaxed. Here, we have those muscles contract these ventricular spaces get smaller, so contracted. We'll come back to these terms, but this is called systole, you've probably heard of that, and diastole, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, for example. All right, do a learning check here. What are the three layers of the heart? 